Hi, welcome to my review of Oz, the Great and Powerful, directed by Sam Raimi. Am I dreaming? You're in Oz. I'm Theodore the Good Witch. Where's your broom? You don't know much about witches, do you? It's the Emerald City. You are here at last, and the prophecy shall be fulfilled. This is my sister, Evanora. I'm here to serve you. The royal treasure of Oz. It belongs to you. But only after you defeat the Wicked Witch. Just how wicked is she? Towns were destroyed. <laughs> Children were orphaned. A great wizard from Kansas. I've waited for you to come and set things right. Me? What happens in Oz the Great and Powerful is that a young magician who is played by James Franco crash lands into a mysterious land called Oz. Like I mentioned earlier in my review, Oz the Great and Powerful is directed by Sam Raimi who is mostly known for doing the Evil Dead and Spider-Man trilogies. And to be quite frank, I'm not really a huge Sam Raimi fan outside of the first two Spider-Man films, so by me saying that, I came into Oz the Great and the Powerful with no expectations whatsoever. Originally, I had no intention on seeing this film, but I'm kind of glad I did. Now I'm going to be upfront and honest with you, Oz the Great and Powerful has an abundance of problems, but even with that said, I still enjoyed it. Despite the fact that I'm not a fan of heavy doses of CGI, the CGI itself looked quite good. However, when you place real actors in such an overly cartoony world, it starts to look a bit odd. This was a huge problem for me for the first 10 minutes, but after those first 10 minutes, I did finally get used to the visual, so it wasn't as distracting as it was at first glance. But even then, I couldn't help but wonder how much better this film would have been if Sam Raimi would have gone with a more realistic look. In other words, more reality, less CGI. Oz the Great and the Powerful stars James Franco, Mila Kunis, Rachel Wise, Michelle Williams, and Zach Braff. All of the performances were very flip-floppy at times, however, the only actors who seemed to be the most consistent were Zach Braff, Rachel Wise, and Joey King, who does the voice of a little porcelain doll. As for the other three I mentioned, a couple of other takes would have done them a great service even though some of the writing is hit or miss. I really liked James Franco and for the most part I thought he was good in this, however there were times he was clearly sleepwalking in the role he was given. As for Michelle Williams, the same exact description could be applied to her as well. However, the one that takes it all is Mila Kunis. Right now I'm going to go into some spoiler territory about her character, so if you haven't seen the film, do mute it for a second and then come back. Alright, so last chance, here we go. Mila Kunis starts out okay at best until she goes through her transformation. When she became the Wicked Witch of the West and spoke for the first time, I started laughing and I thought to myself, she sounds exactly like Meg Griffin. Now granted, she does use her natural voice and family guy, but that's the problem. She was horribly miscasted in this role. Either that, or someone should have gone back and done some editing to her voice. It's basically one of the many problems I have with Venom in Spider-Man 3. And it really baffles me to see how Sam Raimi can let something so little like this go. Anyway, I digress. I think Mila Kunis is a great actress, but unfortunately, she wasn't very good in this. I realize I've done nothing but complain, but here's what's good about the film. Unlike most films that are supposedly targeted towards the family, Oz is a very family-friendly film. Aside from having a couple of small harmless kissing scenes and a few lines of dollar that might seem a bit suggestive, Oz the Great and Powerful is a film that is great for the entire family. And I have to add on a side note that Oz the Great and Powerful is kind of like a live action cartoon, so don't go into this film expecting a darker take on the world of Oz, because you're not going to get that. However, what you are going to get is a good, fun, interesting prequel of the American classic The Wizard of Oz, and that was enough to save this film for me. Overall, I give Oz the Great and Powerful a low, but still, 3 out of 5. I'm Colin Kirkland, and thanks for watching.